Hello YouTube and welcome to another edition of uh, Viridis Aerial Walkthroughs. Uh, today we are outside of Peoria, Illinois in the town of Pekin, Illinois at the John T. Mc uh, McNaughton Park. Uh, this is a fairly older course. It was built in the mid-1995. Um, it's gorgeous, gorgeous course uh, surrounded by two bodies of water. Uh, it has a nickname with the locals. It's uh, for, Instead of McNaughton, it's called McNasty. And there is a good reason. Even back in its day, it was an extremely challenging course, and it still is today. Uh, throwing a par of 54 is challenging if you're a novice, amateur, or just a general player in case. So, like I said, it's a gorgeous course. I'm just going to do a quick fly through here, uh, showing you some of the nicer sceneries. Uh, there's actually Nicola Castro and his girlfriend right there, and uh, they are, did an awesome uh, playthrough in this tournament. You'll get to see that later in our, uh, make sure to check out our footage that's coming up. Um, the course itself uh, was made by, uh, I actually met the man who created it, or at least he claimed he created it, uh, Mr. Marshall Hopkins. Uh, he said that he was, uh, he's been a pro player since the mid 90s. You know, he had to retire because of some uh, uh, back and arm issues, I believe. So he, but he still comes and watches. Uh, it's great, great course. Uh, come check it out if you haven't had a chance or if you're nearby. Beautiful and challenging course. I'll just let you uh, check out some of the videos, uh, fly through here of some the second pond and uh, and the hole that we'll be going over later where you throw over this pond. Uh, that's it. In the meantime, enjoy our walkthrough. So here is hole one. Uh, hole one is 444 feet. It, you see where the tree is to the left, where those two gentlemen and the guy in the red shirt, it's right after that tree is where we're going. Most, uh, most pros will actually be throwing to the left of those trees and underneath and try to get a roll up to that hill at the end. Uh, others will play it safe and take the flight that the uh, the route that the drone is taking, step a little higher and try to go around the big tree. And there it is. It's uh, surrounded by like a couple logs and a nicely patched area. Uh, something that we're gonna try in these new videos is uh, we're actually gonna walk you from hole for hole to hole if possible. So here we're just gonna take the drone to the next hole uh, to the T2, so you can see. So uh, hole two is right shortly after that hole to the uh, the first hole. You can see the first holes. You know they're still finishing up. It's just a really straightforward, easy hole. Just throw it down the hole. Don't let this deceive you though. Just this is an easy giveaway hole. It's very important to uh, birdie or part of this one because uh, the n upcoming holes aren't quite as generous. And like I said, um, we're gonna try to get you to figure out how to go hold the hole whenever possible. I apologize some holes that we don't have footage. Um, but we will try to get more consistent with that as time goes on. This is the first time we're trying this. I hope you guys like it. Because some of these courses we realize are actually confusing to get to hole. Like right now, where that gentleman was, was the short tee. This is the long tee. We're only doing long tees this, today. And then hole three is uh, 351 feet. Um, deceptively long. Uh, it, it's a very, very hard right hook into a very small cubby hole in the woods uh, to get to the basket. And you can see the basket still left right there. Apologize if we can get it. Now, hole four, we can get the footage walking to it. But hole four, there's two T's side by side. The long T is to the left. And uh, it's a very challenging because it puts trees on your normal flight path that most players can throw only. Trees just are just conveniently in the way, and it's so deep that that cur that initial curve starts really early. So if you put an early curve on it, you'll end up in the bushes to the left before you get into the open straightaway. That, and that's right there is going to be the entrance to uh, get to hole five. So now hole five, you just take this little pathway right here, little walkway. Sometimes it's flooded, so be careful. It is a bit of a lengthy walk. That's how a lot of these holes are, we found out. So right there is um is actually not the T. This is the T. Uh, a little hidden back. Uh, that was the short T. And this one, even with the long T, is 303 foot. And the only reach, the only difference really between the two E's is that big tree we just fly by, flew by. Um, that tree tends to block quite a bit of route options for you. Uh, 
but if you can keep it a, a solid curve and then a straight hyzer, I believe. I apologize, I'm not too much of an expert on this stuff. I am only the pilot and a very casual disc golf player. And there's hole five for you. So you can see the little pathway to the left, and here we are walking through it, is uh, the pathway to hole six. And that's the short tee. We're going to keep walking past uh, by the this outhouse right here. Uh, word of warning for the ladies uh, and the men, gentlemen. Uh, not recommended using that outhouse. I would probably go back to the porta potty at that hole one. So this one is a shorter hole, two, only 282 feet, but there are, you have this nice big open area you got to fly through, but then bam, you get hit with these bushes, and you're still going, and there's actually a steep incline rake. You can see where those logs are. Yep, and you got two inclines you got to deal with. Uh, some people like to throw it through these trees because they don't have to deal with that tree right there we just passed right there. So that's why I just flew there to give you an idea. And there's the basket hidden, hidden, nestled behind a bunch of more trees. So hole seven is a very long hole, but you're challenged because you got to try to throw a very straight throw at the beginning because the very tightly densely packed trees are there in the middle. And then you get the curve right away after that. There is a water hazard to your left. Uh, it's actually uh, the third lake that I forgot. I mean, actually the second lake uh, that, you know, is very long uh deceptively long so be careful you don't you know put too much curvature in your disc and you can see some of the water right there to your left and your basket is right there right through this nest line so it is a very long hole it it feels deceptively short when you first go but it's it's long and you got water hazards left so now you're going to go to T8 now T8 is right behind these bushes right here uh, you s that pathway right there. Normally this can be flooded, so that's why there's a wooden pathway. That's the short T for T8, but we're just going to turn around here and go back to, t uh, to the T, the long T, because that's what we're going through today. So the long T makes it 399 feet, and uh, it puts it quite challenging for you right-handers that haven't learned how to put in a lot of hyzers and anhyzers in your disc yet, uh, because right outside this here, is a water to your left so if you put too much curvature you'll be ending up into a water hazard but you want to go right because right is where the basket is and it's very far away even in the open field uh, it is through these trees so if you manage to get a lot of highs with the trees branches and the locations of trees makes it very likely that you can hit one of those trees and roll back down so uh takes a little plan and keep in mind from the t the long t you are blind to all this uh, so a spotter is somewhat recommended. All right. So up ahead is actually the short tee. You can see it right there between those trees. That's the short tee for hole nine. But we are not going to the short tee of hole nine. We are going to go to the long tee. And this is what makes this course great. Because the long tee, you have to throw over the water. See that little patch of uh, astroturf looking grass? Yep. Right next. Uh, right. Yep. There you go. That is the long T for hole nine. Now this was a very challenging um, hole to record with the drone uh, mainly because our path was very blocked by foot. Um, we had to get very very creative and uh, believe me it, lots of editing was done to make this seem better than it really is. So after as you can see you have to throw not only over the water but once you throw over the water you gotta get into these woods right here now there is one large opening and that's the large opening just in that middle right corner right there and I'll be flying through this is the the path a lot of people take because it's a nice big opening you can see in, in, in behind it you can see where your disc lands from the tee and uh, it also allows you to um, get a nice open shot of the basket however it's not the most ideal because you still have to throw through those trees in front of you and you still got a quite quite a distance way to the basket. So other people, some other people will actually throw it through these trees to your left right here and park it at the basket. Right through these this opening right here, right there. And then I'll, I'll swivel the camera down in a second here for you. Uh, let me just get to that. There you go. There's the basket. Okay. Uh, as you can see, very, very challenging hole. So uh, parring that one will be quite, quite a task for the long tee. 
uh, we had to climb through quite a few logs just to get over and get back to our drone to get, get it. It was a very hard one to film. All right, so now we're going to uh, hole 10 here. Um, hole 10 uh, is kind of an interesting hole because you're playing alongside of a very long hillside. Uh, but you're playing along the hill, not up or down the hill. So, And it's two opposing hills, so you, you, you'll you be able to get a view in a second here. So this is the long tee. Short tee is to the right right there. So taking off there. 423 feet here. Uh, you got quite a difference to cover. It's quite narrow, especially in the long, uh, long tee because you're right along the edge line here. So you got a few... Pros are definitely, as you can see, we went to go through over two hill humps. You can definitely see the slant going to the right. You know, the hill is definitely going downward. There was a small hump uh, a couple, like 100 feet back that was slightly slanted the other way. But as you can see, this one, there's quite a gray that you have to get through. And it really affects the disc, the flight of the disc, something you will have to compensate for. So uh, hold, that's the end of hold 10. It's pretty straightforward, but far more challenging than it looks. Now, going on to hole 11, uh, almost the same thing, but you got this tiny little ring right here, and that's the short tee. Uh, we're taking off from the long tee. It is a very, once you enter this ring, it is extremely narrow, um, although we actually witnessed uh, a player from Ohio actually hit the basket with this from the tee. It was actually very amazing, but uh, he didn't, he actually hit the chains, and we heard the chains as we were walking away. It was very, very famous moment. As you can see, narrow halfway through, it starts getting narrow and stays narrow. And then you get through another one. And then there's another. This is the second ring you have to go through. And uh, we're going to fly through one of the holes here that goes through these bushes. And this is a straight hole. Most people go to the left of this. But there was a couple pros that were able to make it through this little hole and just park it beautifully and birdie this hole. Absolutely amazing. Definitely check, it out, to check that out when you get a chance. Hole 12, you got to go through a couple mud pits. It was just to the right from uh, from where the last hole was. 357 feet, but it's imagine just one big crescent-shaped moon because this is essentially what this hole is. You got to make it through these tall bushes. Once you make it through these tall bushes, you better be able to hook a, a hard right. Um, once you get through those mud pits, again, and uh, in front of us to your left is where the original hole was. Uh, the last hole was, but to the right here is where we're going to be going. So, sorry it's taking so long. We're being slowed down by the mud, so we're trying to keep up with the drone. All right, then we just look back. Bam! There's the short tee, and that's nestled inside that bush housing grotto thing. Uh, pretty scary. Don't you know? Good place to check out though. But then, as you can see, after that hard right I was talking about, it becomes very narrow. So, not hitting a bush, very hard, very unlikely without some good solid practice and skills and there you go that's a whole uh, that's the, the whole basket very challenging one for sure as you can see and I hope some of you are really starting to see why this is called McNasty it's like one challenge after another there's no s very few straightforward holes and after hole 13 as you can see going to the I'm sorry after hole 12 going to hole 13 you have to enter this little bush and follow this pathway the bush is just to the right this pathway is just the right. It's there is a ravine. Some people have thrown in there, so again, be careful. Uh, during the tournament, they had spotters. If you're playing with a group, I would recommend it if it's your first time because you don't want to go in that ravine because it it's gonna take some time to fish it out and find it. Uh, we had some nice weather, so it was very dry through the course for the last few days. But um, again, something you want to uh, be prepared for. All right, so now we're at hole 13 here, 418 feet, pretty wide open fields. Um, this one, it, you know, it's more of a uh, blind shot because of the S pattern that it holds. So there's the short T right there. So it makes it hard to uh, kind of gauge where your disc lands. So a spotter if possible. If, uh, if not, just try to aim for the open fields. So see where that big, i um, guessing it's a maple tree or some sort. Uh, that right underneath is going to be the basket here. Um, so if you're trying to go for a smooth sail after the S pattern, uh, you're more likely going to hit that tree. That is definitely strategically placed there. All right, so up next is going to be hole 14, 453 feet, so even longer. But it, for some reason, it doesn't feel quite as long as the last hole, but it's probably because it's more narrow and has a couple little more curves. So let's go a little fly through here. 
and uh, we just passed the short T right there. Again, there's a little collar here, just a little narrowing of the pathway. Something you've got to plan for here. Bushes aren't too thick, but it would cost you definitely a stroke uh, if you're not careful. And then there is the basket uh, right after bushing. This one, uh, most of the pros parred or birdied pretty easily. It was actually uh, very impressive. Uh, so you shouldn't have too much problem if you have some decent experience. Uh, going on to 15 here. So 15, it was just shortly after we left 14. It was just to the left. Uh, we already flew over the short tee. And there you go. And then we're coming up to the long tee here. All right, taking off from the long tee. 432 feet uh, doesn't seem like much, but again, very narrow little choke points that can cost you a land in a bush, something you better be prepared for. And then you get this nice big open area. You definitely want to try to make it into this choke point right here, this collar point right here, if you can, uh, where are all these bushes, because uh, it makes it very hard uh, to get through because you still got another 150 feet to get to the basket from it so you definitely want to make it uh, worth if you're gonna work if you want to do a, a a par okay so we have about one more hole left on this uh, this side of the course and it's gonna be T16 T16 is just long <laughs> and because of that a lot you'll see a lot of the almost every pro player try attempted a roller and was successful uh, to get that max distance they could and you will see why in a second here um, if you try going for a long drive those trees right in front of you will definitely punish you uh, along with a, a curve if you get any sort of curvature at the end uh, that road is OB and you de I mean obviously everyone knows you don't want to be OB so roller it is uh, the hill makes it's actually on a downward hill so it makes a, a roller very nice and they did mow it that day so thank goodness um, however a little water warning right what we're about to pass this little gag of trees right here uh, that little gutter right there makes a nice little sinkhole for rollers so uh, or bouncers you know bouncing rollers uh, I watched Dana Vici, who consistently threw some great ones. His one of his rollers got caught in a minute. There it is. That was cost him a stroke. It, luckily, it wasn't in in the actual tournament. It was just kind of a practice thing. So you know, no biggie. But again, something to plan for. Again, as you can see, it was really, really long. Um, so once you get to the end of 16, across the road are the last two holes. So hole 17. I'm just going to turn the camera around here real quick. See where those gentlemen are walking up? That's where the end of uh, hole 16 was. So if you're coming to 17, you got to cross the road and over to the field. So hole 17 is 459 feet. It's not going to look very long uh, from an aerial view because I'm going to get some air on it. But uh, it is. Uh, and you have to have this big wall of bushes right here. you got to throw around this. And once you get around this, I mean, it looks thick and it's deep and it's long. And once you get around this... You still have almost another 200 feet to go, and that two, that last 200 feet, it, you know, it's straight open field. So if you can get around that bush on your uh, your drive, you're a goal, and you can get in this open field. You can have a nice little drive, but as you can see, it's still quite is that little speck right there. There you go. That's the basket, and uh, up that top that hill, you see that one pole. That's actually the T18, the uh, monster of this uh, course. Uh, as you can see, that's an insane hole. And speaking of insane holes, this is the monster, 849 feet. Um, I should note that this took, this is considerably sped up. Uh, you, you know, you can, can't even tell, but I mean, this was my uh, probably, I think, fourth or fifth take of the last two holes. Uh, and I was pretty exhausted from this. Uh, so it was taking me some time to get through it. And, you know, you can imagine uh, filming uh, three rounds of disc golf um, and plus doing these walkthroughs. We were pretty all exhausted, to say the least. But we do it because 
this is what we do it for. We do it for you guys. I hope you guys enjoy this. Um, 849 feet. As you can see, I just had a pretty long rant there, and that still isn't going. We're still going. I mean, there's nothing really blocking your way. All it is is you got to throw it as hard as you can, as straight as you can, get to that basket. It is. That gentleman just left right there. That's the basket. Very hard course. I mean, it's so big. This one hole, they have the entire one side of the course dedicated just to hole 18. There you go, ladies and gentlemen, hole 18. And that's 18 holes of John T. McNaughton Park. Uh, I hope you like it. It is definitely, if you're in close by, you're just coming through, definitely check it out. What a beautiful course. What a challenging course. You and your buddies will have a great and very challenging time playing here. It, it's very clean. Uh, it's one thing that was I was very, very impressed by was how clean and cleanly and orderly this course was. Uh, huge thanks to the people that support it. If you liked our video, uh, please give us a check out at our website, viewerdisc.com. Uh, it gives us latest updates, uh, things, aerial walkthroughs to many of our other courses, and we, you know, we're updating it pretty regularly, trying to get as much information. Again, it's all new. It's only been out for a couple of weeks. Give us a let us know how it goes. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye.